that people at the same time at Jimmy Ackerman's wedding, mm -hmm. uh, I, I met Mel Cohen. Now Mel Cohen, people in, in education in, in, in in children's dentistry, you don't know that name, is well, very well known, internationally respected uh, gentleman. And I met Mel Cohen at Jimmy's wedding. He was teaching at Harvard. He's, we were introduced, and Jimmy said, you know, Lieberman is going to Israel next year, starting a program. And uh, Mel Cohen said, well, you're getting the best student I've had in 10 years. That was Shaky Shapiro. Yeah. yeah. And he knew yeah. him? Yeah, well, he, they, he was a student at Harvard. And Mel Cohen was his teacher. I see. So he said, Lieberman, you get the best grab him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we did. We took And then Zev Abrams came at the same time. Before what, the, year, what year was the first? Uh, the first course started in 71, I think. 70. We started teaching in Jerusalem, yeah, actually, in, in, yeah. on Rehov Yerushalayim in, in Jaffa. That's where we started? That's where I started, uh, using a, a, a community, city clinic, something belonging to the municipality. Zev Abrams and I, Zev had just come from South Africa uh, by way of University of uh, um, St. Louis, which was also one of the best schools in the States at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, Zev and I hit it off right away, and, and he was my so first So you were the two? Uh, the two of us started everything. Started the, the program? Yeah, and then mm -hmm. Shaiki came back, and, and Kovo came. All within two, two or three years. Shaiki came from Harvard? Shaiki came from Harvard, and Kovo came from the University of Toronto, Toronto. Professor Woodside. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had an unbelievable nucleus. So four people? Four people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 70, 71, 72? Yeah, yeah. And, we, we, and who, who, you remember the names of the first students? Uh, yeah, Maria Toder, uh, Perla Rafalim. Rafalim. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, Dina Perla was from, was from Newfoundland. Uh, so, not Newfoundland, it's, uh, some uh, Scandinavian country, and she was sick every winter. She coughed every winter. For, we wondered if she lived through the course. She was in her 60s when she took the course. So Dina Rafaelin? Perla Rafaelin, Dina Perla, Maria Toder from University of Moscow. And I keep forgetting his name. He, he still comes to the meetings. He's from Ramat Gan. He's, he's a dentist. Goz? Yeah. Goz? No, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I goes, think it's goes, goes. Goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the one man. He's still oh, working. We had another another boy from Persia. Persia. So that was was Mexico. Was Perla Rafali was Mexico, Russia, Egypt, and, uh, uh, Natan. What was his name? Uh, now it'll come back. And and uh, it was an international program even then in 70, 70 <coughs> 71, the latter part of seventy one. <coughs> Let's go back to the interview. If you go back. Can you name your mentors? Go to the mentor. Who who were your? I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, one. Well, how far back we go? My English teacher. How far? My, <laughs> no, English, no. my English teacher in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the professional. Professionally, you can go. You can go well, back to Washington. <laughs> yeah, uh, professionally, no, uh, Brody was. Brody. The, uh, yeah, he was a one-man institution. He, he, the man that sort of took the people like Tweed and, and the Renfro that taught me, uh, they were called tooth jockeys. They were called tooth because they could ride a tooth like a, like a jockey could ride a horse. They could ride a tooth anywhere. But mm -hmm. the biology behind it, that was Brody. And that's why he hated Tweed. And that was why when Tweed. Uh, okay. they, they, they were. They tweed were, masters the wire. And yeah. He, brought, he mastered the, uh, the, the biology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I would say, believe it or not, is not an orthodontist, but that's, uh, well, if you stick with orthodontics, it's Lyle Johnson. Johnson. Not that he's a mentor, but he, he, he's someone that I could believe in, because it was tough coming back from Illinois. The East Coast was 30 years behind, and it was... In the profession. In the profession. It was very... De the only other East Coast person was uh, Straub, and he has a textbook up here. And, and he, he taught for a little bit in, in New England, but he really, he carried the Edgewise appliance to the East Coast, but it didn't grow at all. And Brody carried it to the Midwest, and then from the Midwest it went west. It didn't come east for a long time. So the East Coast was way, way behind. <clears throat> it was frustrating for me uh, to go to meetings and when I felt so superior, really, we left, you know, I left Illinois with a superiority complex. 
that you were the best and you could hand, handle everything, which we could because the cases were so pre-selected to finish perfectly that we only knew that you finished perfectly. We never had a case with a missing tooth, or nothing that, that, that would lead to a problem. That was the, uh, the philosophy of the department. So, the, the, so these, but are, in terms these of are the past uh, two mentors, you know, yeah. going on in the profession because, you know, you were a teacher, you, you were... Uh, appreciate uh, if you look, if you look today, I mean, no, don't go, don't go to the other 2000, but go, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. you're a teacher and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to convince young uh, students in the 90s or of this last century, you know, go back to Brody or something like this. People want to know to do it quicker, faster and uh, yeah. make uh, yeah. whatever. In terms of pushing teeth around, that reminds me of, I, I, I met, Saltzman, Jake Saltzman was the editor of the AJO for many years and he, although he was a, a good writer, a gifted writer and his textbook was the orthodontic textbook for many years, he was a terrible, terrible speaker and after a few minutes most people listening to him would fall asleep but he did say something that left an impression on me and I, I couldn't credit him with anything in orthodontic education but Saltzman who couldn't move teeth around because he was so poorly trained himself as an orthodontist said you know teeth are like people you can only push them around so far <laughs> <laughs> so that was Jake Saltzman so he was not my hero he, and uh, I would say that people like Moyers were, were in terms of, of, of leadership uh, uh, thinking ideas you know that he was dropped behind enemy lines in Crete he was part really? of the, he was here. the CIA didn't exist then, what was called the OSS, the Office of Street Strategic Services. It was the precursor to the CIA. Because of his knowledge of German, he was in the American Army, was dropped behind enemy lines in Crete, and served as uh, Bob really? Moyers was quite a, uh, he and Brody were the leading thinkers in, in orthodontics at, at the time. I think his book was uh, a very different book then. Yeah. And Graeber. Do you remember Graeber? Yes, the first time I heard Graeber talk, he, he opened by saying, I want you uh, to understand that my wife thinks I'm highly unethical. As the years went by, I tend to agree with her. <laughs> so, no, I had no time for Graeber. No profit? For... Yeah, profit was... was uh... He's a kind of from the West, from yeah. the East side. As yeah, well. no, but, He's but, a good friend of Ackerman. Yes, they, they were twins. They were... In fact, Jimmy has moved to North Carolina now in his retirement and, uh, to, to be near to Profit. Work. Yeah, yeah, they're still very close. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Profit is good, although I have to tell you that, that uh, the women would uh, know the name Retin-A. Retin -A mm -hmm. is a wonderful uh, cream that uh, prevents ah, aging. Retina. Yeah, retina. right. Well, the founder of it is, is a guy named Kligman, who was professor of dermatology at Penn. It was his patent, so he stayed on to his 80s. He was still a department chairman because he had the patent on, along with the university on Retin-A. Kligman was a young fungologist when I was a student, and he would tell off-color jokes that we didn't know whether to laugh or not. We had two girls in the class. It was very embarrassing, but he had quite a peculiar sense of humor. Anyway, years went by, and, and, and I went to visit, I paid a shiva call at Kovo, Shlomo Kovo's home with his brother, uh, was a dermatologist. Their father had passed away, and his uh, Shlomo's brother's dermatology books were up on the shelf. I see the name Kligman. I said, hmm, could that be the same Kligman? I pulled down this textbook, which I still quote today. You open the textbook, it says, the purpose of a medical textbook is to perpetuate error. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite quotations. <laughs> and that's the, the owner of Retin-A. <laughs> So, um, nice. uh, it's yeah, still working. Yeah, it's still yeah. working. and Moyers, by the way, one of my favorites. Uh, I went to Westchester County Alpha Omega Society sponsored Bob Moyers, and he gave a wonderful lecture. I don't remember what it was about, but he was, it was wonderful. When he, he finished, he said, I want, to, I want to leave you with one thought that how could we have been so wrong? We were so sincere, okay? <laughs> so that's wow. stuck in my head. Wow. Yeah. All, the, all these, good, good so sentences. All these I remember the first sentence that you said when we came, when I came here to study. You said, "Most important thing is to be a person, be a man." Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what you said. That's, yeah. That's the basic. And I agree with then that. Then be yeah. an orthodontist. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And what I so. say is, remember, at the, at the edge of the bracket, there is a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say. There yeah. is a, at the edge mm -hmm. of the bracket. So we started. Uh, we started teaching in seventy-one. So the four of you. The it was the, you. the four of us, and uh, well, to, uh, a little aside to history, there would have been a fifth. And he was he was at Tel Shemer. His name was Rafael Confino, mm -hmm. and Confino uh, was obvious to us from the beginning that he was not at the same level. He came his, from Switzerland. No, he came mm. from three months in Shelley Rosenstein's office. That was yeah, his, his well, wherever he came from. Okay. His education, the only thing he was proud of was three months in Shelley Rosenstein's office. Okay. And Shelley was a wonderful orthodontist. He became department chairman for many years and then teacher for many years, but and was highly insulted when we said to, to Confino, who wanted to be the scan, I said, I'm sorry, but stay on as a teacher and we'll elevate you as we did with Shapiro, with, not with Shapiro, with uh, Kshipov. And, and with Shimshoni, they were not edgewise people, but we we brought them along, and they learned quickly. Mm -hmm. But Confino was a lost cause, so he moved to Geneva. He he's, he was personally insulted as a Moroccan. I don't know where he was from. He, he was you Bulgaria. know uh, Sard, Sardi. Took it personally, and he moved to Geneva. And I've always felt very badly. Here I come on Aliyah, to, and, and this guy goes because of me leaves the country. But uh, that he was, was in, those he was, was in, in the army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was just the f it was just the four of us, and uh, and then Chipoff came back from from the Eastman program in London, with a good background in biology, and uh, and Shimshoni, who had been the also from Canada, right? Shimshoni's Shimshoni spent a year in Canada. In Canada, right. not clinically. Mm -hmm. oh, not clinically. Not clinically, no. Just with Woodside and lectures and whatever. But he was a fast learner, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, he was in that course at Zamenhof. Really? Uh, yeah. Chipoff was sleeping in a chair. I think uh, <laughs> Shimshoni, he studied in the clinic of Berger. There Berger. Was he was. He worked for here. Berger, and Berger was the the orthodontist. He was my. Berger begged me to take over his practice. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, where did he study Shimshoni Berger? Took it. Shimshoni took it at the end. Mm -hmm. Shimshoni, Shimshoni took care of for a yeah. short time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. where he, I don't know where he. Uh, he, he was a well-respected uh, European orthodontist. Oh, European and, orthodontist. Uh, yeah. But he started uh, maybe after your course. He started to do the edgewise uh, as well. Perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps. I always felt guilty that I didn't pay him enough respect by bringing him back for lectures here. Younger. Yeah, he was a nice man, and and uh, his second marriage was. Beautiful marriage. The two of them got along like brothers. They were just wonderful. Two of them, the two of them together, lovely, lovely couple. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you want to take a break, or it's all right? No, it's fine. Uh, About uh, uh, I mean, uh, you. I mean, you. You came from Engel. I mean, you are actually the yeah, uh, grandson. grandchild, grandson yeah. of uh, Engel, Brody, and uh, yeah, yeah, and. Like you said, you were right. born the day, the, the year that the Engel right. died. So it's kind yeah, of a continuation. Yeah. So you actually exposed to every name of system or technology or whatever that we say, since you know the edgewise, you know the pin and the tube, mm -hmm. you know the lingual, yeah, I mean the, um, the uh, not the lingual, the uh, twin arch. Yeah. You you met uh, with the Edgewise. I mean, yeah. with the founders of the Edgewise, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, then uh, then came the uh, whatever the straight wire, which we laughed at because we had been doing that on our own without calling it anything. Right. We of knew course, that you did it we with the wires. We did it with, with we did it with the bracket position. With, with the bracket position first, 